Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back. This is going to be my final video blog because as you can see, it is all done. It is completely finished. I'm so happy with it. I think it turned out great. So what have I been doing these last few weeks? Well, first off, I've been out of town, so I've been really busy. I haven't had a whole lot of time to work on this, but everything that I need to complete this project showed up. So in the last week, I've been very busy getting this thing done. So what did I do? Well, first off, I installed the Darksoft Multi-Kit for the CPS2, and that allows me to play every CPS2 game that there is on original hardware. And it was a little bit tricky because it's a few daughter boards that you have to install, and with my version of the A board, the motherboard, I actually had to do a little bit of soldering. And normally that's not a big deal, but the soldering involved required four wires on these little tiny solder pads that are really close together. So it's a little bit tricky, but it all worked out. And now I can just load up any CPS2 game I want. There's a little LCD screen that shows the progress and allows you to select the game. And voila, it works great. And it's, again, it's original hardware. Now, I also have the Mister in there, but that is FPGA, which is identical. It's so close. I, it, it's not even like, I can't even compare it to using like an emulator like MAME because it's way better than that. It's frame perfect. You know, if I was running Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo on that, I wouldn't know if it was hardware or original hardware or not, put it that way. But uh, so it's a little redundant having the Darksoft in there, but you know, we as fighting game guys, we get real meticulous with that stuff. So anyhow, so I got that installed. And then the decals for my control panel finally showed up, so I was able to get that done. So I got the decals installed around the joystick and the buttons. Then I installed all the joysticks and the buttons and, um, and wired it all up. And it was a lot of wiring because I had to double up on the kick harnesses so that I could play between the Mister and the CPS2 stuff. So uh, double the kick wiring and uh, a lot of zip ties. <laughs> So then I got the bezel and the new plexiglass installed over the monitor and then it was just a matter of slapping on the new artwork that I had already had. Uh, so I got the red Capcom logos on the sides and then also this really cool chrome Capcom decal for the front of the control panel, which I think looks really sharp. And then of course the brand new marquee, which again, such a simple thing but adds such a nice touch to the whole cabinet and really completes it. And then the last order of business that I actually spent a really long time on was in regards to the audio. And what I wanted to do is, since I've got the Mister in this cabinet, as well as the CPS2 boards, and they're running on a switcher, I wanted to be able to share the same amp, because this has that Q sound amp that is essentially like a pseudo 3D stereo system, since there's two speakers. And so there's already an amp in here that's running all the time, uh, running the CPS2 hardware. And the Mister has R uh, also RCA jacks out that uh, support a line level signal, same as the CPS2 stuff. So I thought, well, I'm just gonna share that same amp. That would be real easy peasy. And so I went out and I got one of those um, RCA selector switches that you see kind of everywhere where you can plug your RCA uh, inputs in and then just select between the two of them or three of them or ho however many. And for whatever reason, I could not get that to work cleanly. Uh, I tried a real cheap one that, that was you know like 15 bucks and I was getting all kinds of ground hum. And then I, I went out and I bought a fancier one, this Rolls, that is supposed to be super clean, US made, all those things. And I was still getting a little bit of, of hum coming out of the speakers. And I spent hours, I, I kid you not, I spent hours trying to troubleshoot that ground loop hum. And I just couldn't figure it out. I, I eliminated everything. Um, I'll save you all the hassle. Eventually, it was just a time vortex and I uh, could not spend any more time on it. So what I ended up doing was a little bit more um, of a Jimmy Rake, so to speak. And I just decided to say, screw the Q sound amp. I'll leave that with the CPS2 stuff. And I just, I had a few other amps just laying around, inexpensive like car stereo amps. And so I grabbed one of those and that's my amp for the Mister. And then what I had to do was actually wire up a power switch to the Q-Sound amp because you don't want two amps going simultaneously into the same speakers. You get all kinds of terrible noise. 
And so since the Q-Sound amp in general is always on, it's hardwired at you know 120 volts, I snipped those wires and I wired in a power switch and ran it up to the front of the coin door. So that was a long roundabout way of getting both of these to work with the same speakers. So, uh, so yeah, there is that. And actually, let me show you guys exactly how everything is running in here because there's a lot going on with this. Okay, so this is my setup here and I'll try to explain what's going on here because there's a fair amount of stuff. Hopefully you guys will be able to see most of this. But um, as you can see here, so I've got my CPS-2 with the Darksoft kit installed in case I want to play any CPS-2 game on original hardware. And then off to the side here, I've got my Mr. Cade, uh, you know, the Mr. FPGA. I did take the faceplate off that, so it might look a little bit different from before. That's just, um, I just decided that I want a little more airflow, so I took the top plate off. Otherwise, it's same thing, um, the Mr. FPGA. And then connected to that is a JAMA switcher, the Riddle TV jam JAMA switcher. That's what that ribbon cable is, because that goes, let me zoom in here. That connects to its daughter card, which is connected to my Darksoft, my CPS-2 kit, so I can switch between the two of them. And below that, connected directly to the CPS-2 board, is the Splitfire um, streaming slash capture uh, board. Now, normally, I wouldn't need that. In fact, I don't need it here, but it was just to make things simple. I had a second one, so I decided um, to use that because that will allow me to just run, you can see that VGA cable to the front of the cabinet, and that will save me a bunch of time. Essentially, with most of my games, what I will do is I will just extend the video cables for the monitor and the game board with a Molex connector all the way up to the front of the cabinet. And if you've seen that video, you know how that works. And I just plug my uh, portable rig into that. Now, I do have a split fire in that rig. So again, I, this is a little redundant, but it makes things way simpler and saved me a lot of time. So that's why I've got a split fire there. And I'll show you the front of the cabinet, how that all works. Um, the Mister does have HDMI out. Uh, that's right here. And that's running to the front of the cabinet with uh, an HDMI extension cable so that I can also stream and capture directly from the Mister. So I think that's about it. Let me just zoom out here. Hopefully that made sense. So essentially I've got Original hardware CPS2 multi kit, and then I've got the Mr. Um, FPGA. They're both on a switcher, so I can toggle between the two of them. And that's about all there is to it. Um, here's our Q sound amp, and I think that's about it. So let me go to the front of the cabinet and I'll show you guys what's going on there. Okay, so here's the coin door. If I open it up here, I'll see a couple things going on here. Hopefully. <laughs> well, first off, here's where my HDMI is from the mister. You can just see that that's just the extension. So I can just open up the coin door, plug into that, and away I go. Capture, streaming, whatever. Um, off to the side, which you probably can't see, here it is, um, is my Molex. So that VGA cable that I had connected to the split fire coming off the um, CPS2 uh, comes out to the front, and this is just a Molex that... I wired up to it. So this will just this is the same exact Molex I use in all of my cabinets so that I can easily plug in and start capturing and streaming as well with uh, with the rig that I have. So that's where that comes out. And then what's going on here? So you can hopefully you can see here's my amp for the Mister. This is just a real inexpensive car stereo amp. Works well. Works does exactly what I need it to do. And then here's my power switch for the Q sound amp. Since it doesn't have a power switch and it's always on, I needed something that would allow me to turn it off so that I don't have interference and feedback and all that, you know, terrible noise. So this is my power switch. When it's on, there's a little red LED, which, uh, which is nice because then that lets me know which amp is on because they both have red LEDs. So what I'll do is when I switch a game, if when I switch from one to the other, what I'll do is I will turn both of them off. I'll switch the game uh, using the player one and two start buttons, and then I will flip on whichever amp I need. So, you know, 
for the mister or for the Q sound. So there you go. Not the cleanest solution, but it works. And you know, instead of one switch, I'm hitting two switches, but it works well. And as far as I'm concerned, the problem is solved. So I'm happy with it. But uh, speaking of audio, the next thing I did was I wanted to uh, experiment with the speakers. And normally with most of these games, they use really cheap, inexpensive car stereo speakers. And a lot of times I don't even think they're two-way speakers, but they're really, really uh, cheaply made, like real basic speakers. So one of the easiest things to improve a, a lot of the quality of the gameplay is to just replace those speakers with nice, nicer ones. And you usually don't have to spend much money. So this was no exception. I was going to, I pulled actually both of these speakers and I recorded a little footage of it because it was really interesting. These are in a speaker box, kind of like a bookshelf speaker, but inside it's still just a little four inch speaker. And with a ginormous magnet on the back, which I assume is just you know extra shielding and uh, to give them a little bit of oomph. But I pulled those out and I bought these nice Pioneer car stereo speakers. They're six by eight speakers. They fill the cabinet nice. They fill the area with the speaker grill. So, and, and they're four way speakers. So they cover the mid ranges better. They have two tweeters um, and, and you know, they cover a wider frequency spectrum. So on paper, they should sound quite a bit better than the Yamaha, the small little Yamaha speakers that are in there. But I don't know, I did a lot of experimenting, I did a lot of tests, and for whatever reason, I just couldn't bring myself to put them in there. They just didn't sound as good. And I, I did a lot of theorizing about why that might be. I did some research where people are talking about how the amp, the Q sound amp, is actually mated with these speakers. It was designed that way. And, and who knows, you know, Capcom designed these, these games this way. And so, you know, I guess it doesn't surprise me that since they designed it with these speakers and the amp in mind, that it's gonna sound better, you know, or the best with them. And, you know, I could spend more time looking at different speakers, but essentially I just left them in. Um, and I'm happy with that. After doing the test now, I can kind of confirm that, okay, it actually sounds pretty darn good with these speakers. So I ended up leaving those in there. And then the last thing I did was I just installed a very simple credit button uh, in the coin door. I like these little black ones that are illuminated. It's, it's real clean and slick. And the reason why I did that is because there's two multi kits in here, there's a lot of games that don't have free play. And so having that credit button easily accessible but clean uh, makes things a lot easier. So. That was just the last order of business, but other than that, it's done. It's completely playable. I'm super happy with it. Now I can finally enjoy this game and, and, and play the hell out of it, but uh, I couldn't be happier. I think it looks real clean. I'm happy with the laminate, the artwork, uh, no complaints. I think this was, it especially given the short amount of time I spent, uh, or I should say a lot of time in a short time frame, I'm really happy with the way it came out. So. Anyhow, thank you so much for sharing this journey with me. I hope you guys enjoy these videos. I enjoy doing these sort of video blogs just because uh, I can kind of cover all the bases in a short period of time. So anyhow, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Mm -hmm.